I'm Janet Morana, Executive Director of Priest for Life. Welcome to our program. Well, you know, my favorite Christmas movie is A Wonderful Life. And of course, many of you know the famous line when um, the little girl tells the daddy, um, oh, every time a bell rings, the angel gets their wings, right? And I just love, every, especially at the end when he opens the book and he says, I had a boy, Clarence, and winks, and you all get all that great teary feeling. But did you ever think about how did the angels get their wings, right? I mean, we know when the bell rings, they get their wings, but but how do they get them? Okay, the bell isn't giving them their wings. Who's giving them their wings? How did this all happen? Well, I have a special treat for you. Today, we are going to learn about this brand new book by my dear friend, Anthony Stefano. And first, I'm going to let you listen to the story. And when we're finished listening to this wonderful story about how the angels got their wings, you're going to get to meet the author himself. And boy, oh boy, am I going to grill him about this book. So let's listen now to how the angels got their wings. <laughs> How the Angels Got Their Wings Written by Anthony Stefano, Illustrated by Antonio Javier Caparo Who is that angel that we see Perched atop the Christmas tree? And how can angels fly so high Soaring through the snowy sky? And why do angels dress in white? And do the angels ever fight? Who made the angels? Any clue? He who made them made you too. So listen, children, gather near. Listen now and you will hear an ancient tale that's true and thrilling, sacred, stirring, sometimes chilling. There isn't any other story filled with so much grace and glory. As the song Sweet Heaven Sings, of how the angels got their wings. Our God is King. He reigns above, the source of life, of joy, of love. He made the moon, the stars, the sun, and rested when his work was done. But when he made this grand creation, before he laid the earth's foundation, he made great spirits full of might, invisible, yet formed of light. Some stayed good, and some turned bad. One of them was proud and mad. Mad that he was not the king. Mad at God for everything. The devil, Satan, that's his name. Either one means just the same. He led some angels to rebel. God cast those demons down to hell. Michael helped to chase them out. A war was raging all about. He drove the devil and his legions down to hell's dark, fiery regions. St. Michael can protect us too from all the sinful things we do, helping us to fight temptation, battling for our soul's salvation. Archangel is St. Michael's title. Three of them are in the Bible. Three who carry out God's plan. Three who serve both God and man. St. Raphael cured Tobit's blindness, healing him with God's great kindness. He put some oil on Tobit's eyes, and Tobit saw the bright sunrise. St. Raphael can help us heal, no matter how unwell we feel. He lifts our spirits when we're low and helps our faith in God to grow. Saint Gabriel was sent to earth to herald our Lord Jesus' birth. He looked at Mary's shining face and told her she was full of grace. Saint Gabriel can help us speak, even if we're shy or meek, and spread the news to everyone about the Lord, God's only Son. But there are more than just these three. 
many more whom we can't see. There are guardian angels too, watching over me and you. Throughout our lives, they guard and guide us, always standing right beside us. We'll never ever be alone. They're even with us when we're grown. There are angels everywhere. We can't see them, but they're there. Angels by the Christmas manger. Angels saving those in danger. Angels dressed up in disguise. Angels there when someone dies. Millions up in heaven bringing blessings down to all the living. Bringing hope and consolation where there's death and desolation. But if you really want to search, look for angels in your church. That's where angels gather most before the consecrated host. God made angels long ago. They serve in heaven and below. He gave them wings so they could fly across the vast and sun-filled sky. Sweet messengers from paradise, they teach us love and sacrifice. They fly from heaven to the ground, invisible, without a sound. But you can sense them in the air, especially alone at prayer. They're present in so many things, in summers, winters, falls, and springs. Like when a children's choir sings. Or when a morning church bell rings. Or in a mother's love that clings. Or in the joy a story brings of how the angels got their wings. I hope you enjoyed that. And now I'm going to introduce to you the author. And this gentleman has been working with Father Frank and I here at Priest for Life. He's one of our executives. I mean, Father Frank and I, we're out there in front speaking, but it's Anthony DeStefano behind the scenes that keeps everything running uh, on time. And so right now, the famous author, Anthony DeStefano. Welcome to the program, Anthony. Thank you, Janet. You always give me such a big send off. <laughs> so, okay. So how many children's books, this is the most recent, how many have you written thus far? I think there's 15 or 16. It's, uh, it's around that number. I'm not exactly wow. sure, but about 15. They're, they're all amazing. Of course, Thank you. my favorite is still your first little star, the, the Christmas story. That will always remain my favorite. But the, how the angels got their wings, you heard me refer to um, It's a Wonderful Life, you know, Clarence, and the, yeah. every time the bell rings. Like, what gave you the idea for this particular book? <clears throat> well, you know, the story of the angels is very compelling, and it's very entertaining. You know, it's got everything. It's got the battle between good and evil. It's got all these interesting characters like Satan, the ringleader of the demons, and <laughs> St. Michael and St. Gabriel and St. Raphael, the Archangels, and it's got guardian angels. You know, it's much better than any of the cartoons that kids watch on TV and any of these Marvel comic book movies. Um, and of course, it's got the advantage of being a true story. Angels are real. They're not make-believe. Uh, they're not fairy tales. Uh, and the invisible world is real, you know? So, and I think that's good for, for children to learn that so that they don't, they don't become these uh, atheistic, uh, secular materialists. So I've always wanted to write a book about angels for children. Uh, but then, you know, you hit the nail on the head. When I was uh, this last uh, two Christmases ago, I was watching It's a Wonderful Life for the billionth time. And that particular line about how does an angel get there, or about angels getting their wings when a bell rings, gave me the inspiration to say, ah, that's something I could springboard off of. Uh, with a guy, a nice title, like how the angels got their wings. So I, so I had the idea all along, but as so often happens with me, something gave me the title. I think it was probably my guardian angel who gave me the, the title. 
Uh, and, and that's what made me write the book, finally. Well, and you know, talking about guardian angels, Anthony, you know, when I was a little girl, uh, you know, I went to Catholic school. And so we were really taught a lot about our guardian angel. We were all taught that guardian angel prayer to say to our guardian angel. But I think sadly to say, uh, in the world we're living in, I kind of think people are forgetting to teach children, right? Uh, because I mean, if you learn about your guardian angel as a child and start praying to them when you're young, it can carry you through in adulthood. But don't you find that the guardian angels are kind of getting forgotten? Yeah, they're, they're not only forgotten, they're pretty disrespected. Imagine if you had a friend or a family member who kept helping you throughout your life, you know, in many different ways, even in unseen ways. And then when you, uh, you know, you, you, you saw this person at a party or something, you didn't even thank him. You didn't even say hello to him. Uh, well, it's much the same with guardian angels. They, they, you know, it's, it's the teaching of the Catholic Church, a doctrine of the Catholic Church that, uh, that from in infancy to natural death, uh, it, we are surrounded by angels, especially uh, one angel in particular, our guardian angel, who is given to us by God to help inspire us and to help us and guide us and guard us and even protect us from danger sometimes. So imagine you we have this spiritual, powerful creature from the time we're in our mother's womb uh, to the time we're on our deathbed. And we never, you know, reach out and thank them or, 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 or uh, you know, or even give them any notice whatsoever. So I think you're you're right. We we have to stop being rude to our guardian angels. And uh, I think especially in today's day and age, Janet, I'm sure you'll agree. You know, uh, we're in, in an age of loneliness. You know, I mean, right. all of, all these cell phones and the 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 uh, tablets and the iPhones and the video games. These encourage children to to go inside themselves. And uh, you know, I think th there's never been a, a time of greater social anxiety than we're living in now, and 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 that leads to loneliness and despair. But knowing that you have a guardian angel who's always going to be with you, I think that will, that will help children as they get old to not be lonely, knowing that they have this this great helper, uh, like an older brother or sister right. with them forever. Well, you know, I think too that this book, like, if parents want to know, well, where do I begin? I think with this book is a great way to start to teach a child about, you know, after you read them the story, then you can go a little bit deeper with them and say, oh, do you realize you have a guardian angel? You know, like, I don't think parents even tell their kids anymore about guardian angels. I mean, I know the good sisters in my school <laughs> and when I was a kid, they, they, well, they told us all about our guardian angels. And we were told, like, you know, besides pr praying to Jesus, well, if you're nervous about a test before the test starts to say the guardian angel, oh, keep me calm during the test or some little thing, you know? So they kind of taught us to kind of, like you're saying, rely on your guardian angel a little bit. Talk to your guardian angel. And then when something goes right, like you just said, thank your guardian angel. I think it's a whole part of our theology that's just kind of missing. And, you know, when you think about, Anthony, during the whole COVID shutdown, when kids were isolated, they weren't with their classmates. They weren't playing with other kids. The kids were getting very fearful. Boy, oh boy, if more of them knew about their guardian angel, I think, <laughs> don't you think that would have helped children a lot? <clears throat> yeah, I think it, I think it would have. Um, it's important for our Protestant brothers and sisters to know that when we pray to our angels, what we're really doing is we're asking angels to pray to to God for us, to Jesus for us. So it's, it doesn't take away from our belief in the centrality of Christ to believe in angels. God uses angels just like he uses uh, human beings to help us. You know, they're just another means of, of help and assistance that God gives us. So there's nothing wrong with approaching them in the same way that we approach our friends and family for help. Uh, nothing right. wrong with that at all. It's an acknowledgement that there's an invisible spiritual world out there. And I do think what you said about the pandemic and uh, there are other evils that children are very aware of, you know, school shootings and terrorist right. attacks and murders and rapes and, you know, pandemics and all of all of that. Uh, they're aware of. We can't hide. You know, you can't ignore evil, Janet, because evil is not going to ignore you. And right. so we need all the help we can get. It's a very tough life we're living. There's suffering, there's pain, there's all kinds of obstacles and challenges. Uh, there's also the devil and his demons. You know, those are real. And this this story addresses those uh, those evil beings, too. So, yes, we need as much help as we can get. And um, I think that if if a parent um, really wants to help the ch their child, uh, you know, one of the things they could do 
is make sure they instill this faith in all of God's creatures, including the angels, from a very early age so that so that their child can enlist the help of those angels uh, as they get older. Right. And of course, <clears throat> all your children's books are have beautiful illustrations. And you've used um, several. I'm going to open up the book just so people could remind them how beautiful the illustrations were. We saw them, you know, during the book being read. But <clears throat> tell us a little bit about this illustrator, because, I mean, the pictures are just beautiful in this book. Um, tell, how did you yeah. find this gentleman? And tell us a little bit about him. All right. Well, this is the first time I've ever used him. His name is Antonio Javier Caparo is a ah. Cuban, Cuban uh, uh, born artist who uh -huh. lives in Canada now. Wow. And, and he has worked with National Geographic and Disney and all the major publishers, uh, right. really gifted artist. And you know, he specializes in doing fantasy science fiction books, but also very realistic books. And I wanted mm -hmm. the angels to have a bit of that superhero look without being cartoonish or from a comic right. book. Mm -hmm. um, because I think angels are much more compelling than Batman or Superman or any of those Marvel comic book heroes. So I right. wanted them to have that look, but I wanted them also to look realistic because they're not make-believe. They're not fairy tale. And um, Antonio is able to paint these, you know, grand panoramic sweeping pictures of God creating the universe. And at the same time, he could also paint these little intimate scenes of a child uh, under a Christmas tree with the angel on top of the Christmas tree. He combines yeah. all of this. That's what I wanted, and, and that's what Antonio does. And so I think I, I really um, I really found a great artist for this book, and I've gotten nothing but positive feedback about it. Right. Well, no, I know here at uh, Priest for Life, we have this book, Brothers and Sisters, at our online store at prolifeproducts.org. It's getting a big response, Anthony, here at the home office, just so you know. Uh, yeah. A lot of orders go out every single day of this book. So, brothers and sisters, if you'd like to get a copy, you go to prolifeproducts.org. Uh, place a, uh, an order there. And of course, what you pay for the book really becomes a donation to Priest for Life to help us with our life-saving work, especially now that we've seen the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Boy, do we have a lot of work to do, don't we, Anthony? <laughs> and, you know, Janet, you know, there's a reason I think why the book is doing well with our audience is because angels do play a part in this pro-life movement of ours. You know, without questions, angels are pow powerful allies in our struggle against evil, and in particular, the evil of abortion. In fact, you know, they were among the first to ever preach the gospel of life, beginning with, you know, St. Gabriel, the archangel's visit to Elizabeth and Mary, um, proclaiming the birth of, of, of Jesus and John the Baptist. You know, think of that unborn baby, John the Baptist, and think of Jesus, you know, G John the Baptist leaping in his womb when Jesus was there. Those weren't blobs of tissues, of course. Those were those were uh, people, you know, and right. one it's a divine person. So, so it's important connection between angels and the... Uh, and the pro-life movement. And, and also one more point about that, you know, all of the children that have been killed through abortion, you know, they had guardian angels assigned to them, you know, right. they had, but, 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 be, but guardian angels and, and neither God nor guardian angels overrule the free will of man. And so they couldn't prevent the abortions that the, the mothers and fathers had, uh, but they were deprived of their job, so to speak, you know, and it's good to, I think that's something that children, uh, would be interested in the fact that guardian angels had a job, but were deprived of it by abortion. That's right. And of course, you know, and if there are any children watching us right now, you know, know that you do have a guardian angel. You should be praying to them. You can even talk to them. You know, before you fall asleep, I know I find sometimes at night, if I'm having trouble falling asleep, sometimes I'll, I'll pray to Jesus and I'll say something to my guardian angel before you long. I fall asleep. <laughs> it, it does work. It really does work. I, I want to impress upon people. Well, besides this book, Anthony, this mm -hmm. you wrote for the kids. Oh, years before this book, you wrote another book. I'm going to give you a flashback here. Uh, Angels All Around Us. And actually, this is the second title because originally you wrote this book called The Invisible World. And, and that's what you were getting to, that there's this whole world that we can't see but exists, right? So tell us, because this seems like the children's book, that's for the kids, but this is for the grown-ups. Tell us a little bit about angels all around us. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, I want to say that the uh, the book for children is for adults too. I write all my children's books, as you know, for with, with in mind the fact that the older brothers and sisters and the aunts and uncles and the fathers and mothers and grandparents are going to be reading those books to the children. So hopefully there's something in the children's book there for the adults too. As far as that book goes, yes, you hit the nail right on the head. It was it's really a book about the whole invisible world, you know, in this society of ours, this secular, uh, materialistic 
society, we believe that there's nothing but atoms and molecules. And that's what the society tries to tell us. But in reality, even if you don't believe in God, we know that the most powerful things, the most important things in life are invisible. You know, you can't see love. You can't see honor. You can't see dignity. Uh, and, and if you do believe in God, well, then you know that God the Father is a spirit. We know that God the Holy Spirit is a spirit and you can't see him. Uh, angels are spirits. Demons are spirits. Grace, you can't see grace. That's invisible. So there's this whole, as you said, invisible world. And if we want to make sure that our children are not taken in by the propaganda of the anti-Christian, secular, materialist uh, society, then I think we should start instilling them and remind adults about the presence of, of these uh, invisible spiritual realities. And that's the purpose of that book right there. Right. And so here at Priest for Life, Anthony, we are running a great deal. Uh, normally, <clears throat> How the Angels Got Their Wings uh, is a uh, suggested donation of $18 and Angels All Around Us is 10 But if they go to our online store at prolifeproducts.org, this is a special, I call it the Janet's Angelic Bundle. You can get both books for a special donation of $25 to our ministry. So if you go to prolifeproducts.org, you can place an order for how the angels got their wings and angels all around it. Of course, if you want to order them individually, that option is still there. You know, it's so funny, uh, Anthony, we just had someone call our office the other day and they have six grandchildren. So they placed orders for six of these books, but to, they wanted them shipped directly to the six grandchildren all over the country. So <laughs> very nice. I, lo I love that. And I want to say also that make sure that anyone out there knows, everyone out there knows that I'm not getting any money from the sale of these books. All that goes to the ministry, to the pro-life work of Father Frank Pavone and all the good work that you, uh, Janet, and everyone there at Priest for Life does. That's right. And so people should know that, you know, Anthony shares uh, his talent here of writing these books with Priest for Life. And in addition, you know, Anthony heads up our entire fundraising team, our finance department. And so it's Anthony and his team that kind of helps all the projects that, you know, Priest for Life does uh, through Father Pavone. Uh, it all is made possible because of wow. Anthony's tireless dedication to us. He's been, Anthony and I have been working with Father for over 30 years together. Uh, and so, Anthony, did you ever think we were, I mean, we always believed we were going to see Roe v. Wade overturn. But all these decades together, I mean, it actually happened. We're still here and it happened, right? Isn't, isn't this exciting? It is. First of all, you're being too kind to me when you say all those nice things. I just oversee those departments. Uh, I'm not the one who runs them. We have great, great people at Priest for Life. I don't really, I, right. I don't do too much uh, compared to you, let's say. But no, I, I, I did think that we were going to overturn Roe versus Wade, but not for many more years. I didn't think that it was going to be something that I would see um, you know, this quickly, actually, uh, we have been working at it for 30 years now, Janet. Uh, but it was still, it's still a shock. And of course the work's not done, as you know, it's, uh, that was, it's just right. a milestone as father Frank says, it's not the final victory at all. We won't, we won't have final victory in, until, uh, abortion becomes unthinkable as father Frank says. That's right. I mean, I really thought, you know, this January we'll, we'll have the fifth, we would have had the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Uh, we'll still mark that anniversary because it's still to me, the American Holocaust. But I really, I really thought we were going to get to January and still not have seen it overturned. I was like you, Anthony, I thought, well, probably in a few more years, you know, but, um, I'm just thrilled. I feel like it's a promise kept to Norma McCorvey, as you know, we promised her we would keep working at it till we saw her. And she's the Jane Roe of the Roe v. Wade. We keep working till it happened. Uh, but it, it really did. But to go back to your books, I just want to tell everybody, first of all, believe it or not, Anthony writes these books after his work day at Priest for Life. If you can imagine, he's very talented. Weekends, evenings, or he gets up at the crack of dawn, he gets an idea early in the morning. I mean, isn't that kind of like what happens to you? Like you get an idea and you'll get up at like five in the morning and start writing? Not exactly, but <laughs> I, 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 I get ideas, uh, you know, I get ideas at mass, um, maybe because I'm not paying as much attention as I should. I, 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 uh, I get ideas when I say the rosary. I get ideas when I'm at Eucharistic adoration. You know, um, it's not natural for me to do those things, to be so spiritual. I'm actually, you know me, I'm a, I'm a new Italian, New Yorker. I'm not, um, I'm not, it's not natural for me to be overly spiritual if I, if I could use those words. 
Uh, so God knows that. And so he gives me all my inspiration at these places that I that I didn't used to go to when I was younger. And <laughs> and, and I think it's because I do go to Eucharistic adoration and, and mass as much as possible that God picks those places to give me inspiration. And I believe that it comes through my guardian angel. In fact, there's a picture in the book that on the, I dedicate that book to my guardian angel. And there's a right. picture there that's sort of an homage to Norman Rockwell. Uh, in which a, a frustrated uh, writer can't have any, uh, who's, who can't get any ideas, yes, is trying to come up with something at, at, at his desk and, and his guardian angel whispers an idea in, into his ear and you'll see surrounding me over there because it's supposed to be me, are various characters from my other children's book, including Little Star Janet. And those represent ideas that I believe came through uh, my guardian angel because yes, you know, God speaks directly to you and I. He speaks directly right. to us. But, you know, he uses the angels. You know, remember, mm -hmm. he spoke, He told Mary about the birth of our Lord through St. Gabriel, you know, and right. he told St. Joseph to, you know, to escape to Egypt through a dream and through angels. So, you know, right. if, these, are the, these are the greatest, most holy, uh, saintly people of all time. And God used angels to speak to them. So I think that, you know, God uses angels an awful lot to speak to us and we just don't know it. And someday, hopefully when we get to heaven, when we find out when we were helped by angels, we're, we're going to extend a big hearty thank you uh, mm -hmm. to all of all of them. Well, I see some of the symbols here, Anthony, and I recognize them. Of course, there's a little star. Here's the puppy that nobody wanted, the little doggy here, right? And um, here's the donkey, right? Over here, right? That's the donkey. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, you know, Anthony has written so many children's books there. I mean, one nicer than the other. So if you go to prolifeproducts.org, you'll be able to see all the other wonderful children's books. You know, there's so much garbage out there for kids. This, this is, these are wholesome books that your children will get a lesson from, but at the same time, you're going to, I know I enjoy reading them to my grandchildren. Now my grandchildren are old enough. They read it on their own. So Anthony, um, I just want to thank you for all these inspirational books. And I know Priest for Life greatly appreciates the donations that we achieve for our life-saving work because of them. So may God continue to give you and your guardian angels some great ideas. I can't wait to hear what the next book's going to be. So okay. thanks, Anthony, well, for joining me. God thank bless. You. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Well, brothers and sisters, please go to our online store and place your order for how the angels got their wings and angels all around us. Remember a special Janet bundle deal for these angel books. You get both books for $25 for a donation to our ministry. Please visit prolifeproducts.org. Well, thank you for joining us today on our program. And until next time, this is Janet Miranda, the executive director of Priest for Life. Thank you and God bless.